So we're going to start with the first part of making chainmail. Now I started making chainmail when I was 15 years old. I checked out books from the library with pictures of medieval armor, and I just looked at the pictures, saw the patterns, I went to the Renaissance Fair, which is coming up soon, and uh, I talked to some guys and they said, well, you should use coat hangers. And I thought, coat hangers? That's ridiculous. So I grew up on a farm, and I know you can get rolls of wire like this. So basically, you take the wire, you need to have a rod to wrap it around, because the first step, step one in making chain mail, is to make a spring. So you can get a, a metal rod just at a hardware store or something. This is actually an old fence post, um, but you can just get a metal rod. You need to drill a hole in the rod to receive your wire, and you need to build a frame for it. Now, if you build a hand crank frame, you're going to have to bend your rod like that. You can use a vise, or you can use just something solid like a metal bumper for a truck, pickup truck, or like some, some logs, heavy logs or something. You've got firewood around. Anyhow, you just need to make your bend so that you have a hand crank. Alternately, you can use a drill. If you've got a variable speed drill and you can set it on a low setting, you can have a, a straight rod, set your drill on the end, and build you a box to do it. Now, once you have that, it's helpful. You can, you can pull off the length of your wire long enough to make your spring, or you can have something like this where you've got a, a second rod and you can roll your, uh, from your roll of wire directly onto it. So you place it into the hole. And then you just begin cranking. Now, as you do this, you've got to hold your wire steady so that it feeds smoothly onto there because you want to make a nice tight spring. Now, here I'm using galvanized steel, which is steel that has a zinc coating. And uh, that's a typical kind of uh, wire that you see uh, used. But you can also use high tensile strength wire, um, for example, spring steel. Uh, or different kinds of stainless steel wire. Those are a lot harder to work with. Uh, they're very rigid, um, and so you can't use normal cutting tools for them. You're going to have to use either um, a torch, or you're going to have to use maybe a Dremel, a rotary tool, something like that to cut it. So this is how you make your spring. Now, if I were doing this for real, I would go all the way to the end here, just leaving maybe, maybe about an inch and a half, two inches here, so that I could pull it out. If I went all the way to the end, then when I let go of that, that would get spin around several times. It would have a lot of force in it, so you've got to be careful with that when you're letting it off. Now, I have a couple different tools here. These are called farrier's nippers, and this is the most important tool that you have in making chain mill to get a good set of farrier's nippers. Do any of you guys know what farriers are? They're people who trim horses' feet. Yep, exactly right. So you could use these to take the, the nails out of the horseshoes and then you can take that off and they actually have a small forge and they can shape the horseshoes then and put them back on. So these are farrier's nippers. Uh, you can get them at like a livestock supply place or like a farm supply place or something like that. Um, this is the most expensive thing that you would get in making chain mail. Um, probably, I'm guessing these days, maybe about $80 or more for a pair of these. These are really high quality steel. Um, they have very sharp blades. This is important in making good rings. Now, I'm not going to use those because those have really sharp blades and I don't want to ruin the blade on them. So when I'm taking it off to make a heavy cut like this where I'm cutting all the way through, I'm going to use these cheaper clippers. All right. And then I'm going to clip that off. And then I can remove the spring. Now, if I had made a full spring, it would look more like this. But basically, this is just a spring, right? Okay, just like a door spring or something like that. So then you have the spring. That's the step one. So you can end that video now.